So this is my Ultra London 55K video. Um, before we start and get into it, I just want to start by saying spoilers. I do actually, see if you can see that, I do actually finish the race. Everyone loves a medal. So I'm going to wear that. And everyone loves a winner's t-shirt, albeit it doesn't fit me. You know, anyone looking for drama, there's plenty of drama in this video. But I just wanted to start by saying that I absolutely loved running this race. So this video is about running my first official ultra distance from Woolwich across South London, ending on the Thames in Richmond. The total distance I'm running is 55k or just over 34 miles. Before I get into this video, I need to context a few things. This isn't my first ultra distance. I previously walked Race to the Stones in 2019 and then my own walking event I called Walk the Line in 2021 during the pandemic, both of which were over, or well, both of which were 100k distances. This ultra is obviously just over half those distances, but I'm attempting to run it. And in this video, you will see that this has to be my worst start to an event or race so far. You see, I have no footage of the start line. I arrived on time, but really, really needed to go to the toilet. The dreaded runners panic right at the start of the day. There is no worse feeling. I've got to be honest, while I'm moaning, because I've got the hump, this was not the best start to a race. They had no toilets on the start line. This is what happens when you go from a normal diet to carb loading a few days before. It happens to almost every runner. So everyone arriving is queuing up for the only toilet inside a leisure centre. One cubicle. Because the registration was inside Woolwich Leisure Centre, I assumed wrongly that there would be plenty of opportunity to use the loo when I got there. So the queue was like 50, 60 deep. Crazy. So I've had to drive around looking for a toilet to only then start 10 minutes late. I had to quickly drive to McDonald's, two miles up the road, use their toilets, get back, register, pin on my bib, put on my running vest and then get to the start line. I missed my starting wave by two minutes, but they allowed me to start in the wave after. This really stressed me out. I finally got running and started to record on my GoPro, only then realizing that I left the pack of SD cards in the car. Okay, so we've started the race, literally 200 yards in, and I've just realized I didn't pack an SD card for my GoPro. So now I have to carry a GoPro that I can't record on. So I'm gonna to attempt to try and record most of it on my phone. I think there's gonna be a lot of shaking camera footage. This is gonna be like the Blair Witch Project of races. You couldn't make this up. This was the most stressed start to any race ever. I'm running along the Thames, so. I'm not gonna lie, this start gave me the hump. I'm gonna try my best anyway. Um, yeah, let's do this, 55K through central London from Woolwich to Richmond Park. And it's gonna be high as a 27, 28 degrees. Today, I'm literally gonna die. 34 miles, let's do this. The race starts on the Thames. I enjoyed seeing the Thames barrier and a very beautiful looking River Thames in the glorious morning sunshine in July. My wave started at 7.20 eventually. So I couldn't stay grumpy for very long. Then in the process of relaxing into the run and enjoying the views, this was all shattered when I missed the turn in and ran a further 200 metres along the Thames before my watch kicked in and told me I was off course. So I had to backtrack, rejoin the route, having now run an extra 400 metres within the first mile. We're two miles in. I'm not going to do updates every two, three miles. I'm overthinking everything. The start, unbelievable. But I just need to get my head in the game now. There are these, I don't know if you can see that. There are these yellow ribbons that mark the course. Let me show you. The trail was marked out by pink ribbons conveniently placed along the route. I will say that the route markings were good. All I can say is thank God for Garmin because I've already got lost twice trying to follow these ribbons. I ended up doing an extra 200 meters on the start line, off the start line within the first mile because I ran too long too far along the Thames. I did move off the route a few times in error, but this was my fault, drifting off into my own world and not paying attention to my Garmin tracker on my watch. I wouldn't go as far as to say that you could navigate solely by the pink ribbons, and I would recommend a tracker of some kind, but the route was very well marked out. <sighs> 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 
we've been running on this footpath now for about half a mile and it's so pretty and you can see London on the horizon it's like a little oasis in the middle of Mottingham or Woolwich or Plumstead wherever the hell I am look there's London over there so pretty my head's back in the game now I feel a lot better less stressed hot though but I'm doing a steady pace I'm currently doing between 11 and 12 minute miles which I'm happy with if I can sustain this for marathon distance oh very happy but we'll see how it goes we'll see how it goes okay we've got a bit of a steep uphill section here rather than jeopardize the end of the race for me i'm gonna uh i'm gonna walk it and then about five or so miles into the race another runner paced me while we chatted about the route it's such a pretty route It's so pretty. Well, it's beautiful. It yeah. is. I mean, you can run the north one of this. Um, but they don't do an event for it, which is a shame. No. It would be equally hilly. One of the best things about running events like these are the other like-minded individuals you meet en route. Unfortunately for me, the lady I was now pacing liked to run ultras a lot faster than I did. We're just coming up to 12K. I think the first checkpoint's at 15. Um, I've just run a blittering pace to this point. I've been running like nine, 10 minute miles. So I need to slow down because there's no way I'm gonna finish this race at that pace. Uh, main reason I started chatting with someone and they were running at a much faster pace than me. And I just kept up with them. Running at this pace did affect my endurance later on in the race. Okay, I don't know how much of an update. I just went the wrong way again, but it's okay because my Garmin watch told me I feel alright, feel good. Uh, other than just going at a ridiculously fast pace, I feel alright. I slowed down a bit now. I'm doing between 10 and 11. Hang on, what way do I need to go? Right, left. Ah, oh, hello. That's checkpoint one, done. We're over 15K now, 40K left to go. Uh, I've taken on board water. I've had some electrolytes. I've refilled, I've refilled the old water bottles. And I've had three cups of Coke, half cups. So that's probably equivalent to about a can of Coke, which feels, like a mistake, but I'm probably gonna be grateful for the sugar. Head's in the right space now, other than having to record on a phone. It's probably windblown. I'm all zoomed in, less than 40K now. So this is the point I'll start counting down. One of the psychological tips I help, that helps. That does make a difference. If you're new to running, try and count down instead of up. I find it helps me, especially on long runs. And I've set the Garmin watch up to count me down. Let's do this. As I get further into my long runs, I try to avoid looking at distance. I've set up my Garmin watch to only show me the map tracker and my current pace. This hopefully makes sure I don't veer off course and I don't run too fast or too slow. Then when you do need to check on distance, it should feel good to know that you've covered a lot more ground since your last check-in. Otherwise you can find yourself counting every kilometer and that's not a good idea psychologically. It's the running equivalent of clock watching at work when you want to go home. Whoa, what's 
say at this point is thank God for Garmin because I have gone the wrong way twice in the last two miles. I have no idea of distance. Let me have a check now actually and I'll report back. Okay, so it's probably a good check-in time. So we've just hit exactly 20k. Things are going relatively well considering the sun's come out now. The next pit stop is at 30k. I've no idea where I am. Okay, we're just coming. New Beckenham Station. So we're in New Beckenham. Railway station. It's strange to think we started in Woodage, now I'm in Penge. We should be coming up to checkpoint two, refill water, which I desperately need, and I might put, put in some electrolytes because that sun is really hot now. It's beating down. I've nearly finished my second round of water. I'm trying to ration it now because I've got 5k and I've got about half a bottle left. So I hope, I hope. I stay feeling this good for the rest of the race. I've got a feeling I won't, but let's keep going. At this point, mainly because of the heat, dehydration was starting to play a factor. I could feel the effects of dehydration starting to kick in, fatigue and brain fog to be specific. The sun had now really come out in force, beating down temperatures were now pushing 30 degrees and I was having to ration the litre of water I replenished back at pit stop one. The hills at Crystal Palace were steep, absolutely no point trying to be a hero and run up them. There's some real gnarly hills here, but what goes up must come down. I'm hoping that the fact that we've been walking up now easily over a mile worth of just walking up hills. I'm hoping there's going to be a nice descent in a minute. This checkpoint's been a long time coming. Oh my god. Someone's playing Rocky music in the background. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear it on the phone. Fair play. Sorry, mate. <laughs> oh, I want to keep up with the guy playing Rocky, but I can't. I thought it was someone playing out their window, but he's got a speaker in his bag. Bless him. Yeah, now we're on a descent. And it hurts as much as going up. I said, my right winger. I then blasted through the second checkpoint, making a major mistake and narrowly avoiding it becoming catastrophic. The mistake I made was nearly race ending. Okay, right, we blasted through checkpoint two, checkpoint Charlie, done and dusted. I didn't hang around, I didn't film it. I just got in, got my water filled up, dropped an electrolyte tablet and yeah, moved on. You can get sucked into them checkpoints before you know it. By the time you've had three or four melon slices, some Haribo, and been to the toilet, you haven't done your water and you've been there for 20 minutes. So priority one, refill water. Uh, that was an ordeal in itself because there was a queue for the water, for the one water fountain. We've blown through that checkpoint. So now next checkpoint's in 15K. You see, I'm wearing two 500 milliliter running water bottles on my vest. You can see them on my chest. A liter of water isn't a huge amount when you're running in this heat. So I also brought with me a third 500 milliliter grip bottle that I also filled up at the checkpoint. So that's now 1.5 litres of water I'm carrying, which should hydrate me well enough between pit stops. But I then ruin that by dropping one of my electrolyte tablets into one of the bottles, effectively making it salt water. Good for replacing my lost salt I'm losing through sweat, but very bad for my dehydration. Basically, I messed up. I should have just kept it as fresh drinking water. There were other things I could have done to replace electrolytes without losing fresh water. I reached the 35K marker, Dehydration and brain fog was really starting to kick in. Oh, that must mean we're at the 45k mark. No, Jesus Christ. That must mean we're at the 35k mark. 
my brain is foggy. I wish we was at the 45k mark. Even though I was drinking water continuously, I simply could not get enough water on board to satisfy my needs. This was causing me to feel confused and slightly groggy. I was really very aware of how dehydrated I felt, so I stopped at a co-op en route, emptied the seawater I was carrying, drank the rest of my fresh water I had, and bought another litre of cold water. Drank that, replenished my supply, and indulged in a cold Lucasade. This immediately picked up my spirits. I stopped at a co-op and bought some Watertown Lucasade. It's just too hot. I'm just gonna get these on board the water and the Lucas Aid and then push on. We're just coming up to 26 miles. So we're just coming up to marathon distance now. Okay, we're in Wimbledon Park. We're at 43K. We've got 12k left to go. Pit stop number three should be very, very soon, which I desperately need because I've got no water left. 10k, two park runs to go. Come on, just 10k through Wimbledon Common. Okay, sit rep. We have got about 6k left to go. We've just entered Richmond Park. Uh, how do I feel? I'm gonna stop running for a sec. Yeah, I feel good, feel all right. Uh, water intake. I'm pretty dehydrated, even though I've been drinking pretty much non-stop. But as soon as I drink it, it's just been consumed. But yeah, it is what it is. I've been filling up uh, a litre and a half of water every pit stop. I should be okay. I mean, that's more than enough, but it's just a hot day combined with the distance. It's just made it so as I'm pretty dehydrated. But yeah, we were on a long, slow incline here over Richmond Park. It's beautiful. Let me show you. In the last mile running towards the finish line, I got to again run along the River Thames. Running along a very busy Richmond Thames path was fantastic. I was chatting with other runners, it just felt fun. Okay, sit rep. We are, I think, less than a mile from the finish line. Oh my God, that feels so good to say that. Do I have more in me? No, but that's psychological. If I had to keep going, I would. Do I want to stop? Yes. Do I want to sit down? Yes. Um, run out of water. I need a drink. Uh, other than that, I feel all right. Legs are sore, no blisters. On a scale of one to 10, how do I feel in regards to the event? Eight or nine? Uh, how do I feel in regards to legs? Probably a three or four. So, yeah, let's keep going. Less than a mile. Ah, finish line. Where is it there? I then also raced another runner to the finish line and sprinted the last 50 meters. No matter how tired you are, you should always sprint to a finish line if you can. as best I could, of course, across the line. The finish line winner's medal ceremony was very unceremonial. You had to ask for your medal and help yourself to a t-shirt. Hey mate, can I get a medal? Yeah, yeah. 
I was met on the finish line by my family, including my auntie. Hang on, which one? This one? It's filming. Oh, is it? Yeah. It's filming. Sorry, darling. Go on. Beg your pardon. Get that medal on. Woo! -hoo. And the t-shirt. <laughs> and again. And again. Three cheers. Hip, hip. Hooray! What a great day. Not a lot I do differently. Feet were great, no blisters or injuries, which is the main thing. I didn't film it, but I did consume several gels and saurine bars, which is better than I expected. Water and my hydration levels were my biggest challenge. The heat and humidity made that a real issue. Tactically, I don't think I'll be dropping salty electrolyte tabs into 50% of my water supply again, but that's it. It was a huge success. It was a race of two halves. First half was a great run at a good pace. The second half was made more of an endurance event because of the heat and the dehydration. So my next video will be me going through my kit bag and my own personal essential runners bits and pieces for long runs. The kit list I used for my Yorkshire 3 Peak Adventure four weeks ago and now this ultra run. So if that flicks your switch, then please don't forget to subscribe. I'm also signed up for the Thames Path Ultra 100K, so pretty much double this in September. And I use this 55k ultra as a suck it and see training run for then. If you ran this event or you're a newbie runner looking to try your first marathon or ultra, then I'd love to hear from you in the comments. What did you think? Thank you for watching me slowly die on this long run through London in the summer. I loved every single second of it. And even when I finished, I'd said I'd do it again in a heartbeat. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.